Hello everyone, my name is Brianna and I am here with a take and make kit from the Albright Memorial Library. We're going to be doing a little video to give you a tutorial of how to make our take and make for April and we are going to show you how to use our template for this month's kit. So this month is very special for us here at the library because April is National Poetry Month but it's also when National Library Week falls this year. So we are going to be celebrating the library and all things books this month. And I wanted to make our take and make kits reflect that theme for our month. So we are going to be making tiny book jars. So these jars um, are going to come with all of the supplies to make tiny books. I have some included covers that you can use um, already pre-made of some popular books and some poetry titles given the theme of our month. But I also have the template that I'll be showing you how to use that will have um, the ability for you to edit it and make your own book cover. So you'll be able to choose whatever book covers you want to use, maybe of books you've read this past year or that you want to read. I love the tiny book jars because it's a perfect way to get to have a tiny physical representation of all the reading you've done, especially if you're someone like me who likes to do a lot of library books that you're going to be returning or you like to use digital books, maybe you read on Libby or Hoopla or on your Kindle, and you wanna remember the little books that you've read. So you want this cute little version of them to remember them by, even when you don't physically have them on a bookshelf at home. And it takes up a lot less space and it's really cute. So each year what I do is I will make tiny books and I will put them in a little plastic, like this material ornament, and I will hang them up on my Christmas tree. So that way I remember all the books I read in the past year. Or if you want, you can keep this jar and keep it on your bookshelf. You can make this jar full of book titles of books you want to read so that you remember all the books that you have on your to be read shelf that you really want to read. I highly recommend um, doing it this way and just using whatever you want. So we're providing a jar, but if you weren't able to get a kit, you can use just about anything you want. Um, you can use any other variety of small jars. You can use the tiny bookshelves that you can find at the craft store that you can put the little fake books on. Um, you can use anything you like. So for our month's kit, we're gonna be using these tiny jars and I'll show you all the supplies that are going to come in your kit. So when you open up your kit, you will find instructions that will give you a template of how we're gonna do all of these steps. This video is to walk you through those steps more visually to help you understand them and make sure it's a little clearer for those of us who can't just look at text and some pictures and know what to do. It helps to see it done in action. And then it will also have a link to the template we are going to have on Canva, which is what I use to make my tiny books. So in your kit, you will find a tiny jar, a container of Mod Podge. This is just the standard glossy Mod Podge. So when you adhere it, it will dry clear um, and have a nice little sheen to it. So you can also use matte Mod Podge or any other kind of clear drying glue that you would like. But I like the sort of finish that this gives to our books because it makes them nice and shiny um, and it dries. Where's my camera? There we go. It dries completely clear on them. So you can see how that looks and it will help hold our pages together and our little book cover on top of our pages. So you've got this little container of Mod Podge and you've got a paintbrush. Those are really our only tools other than a pair of scissors that I highly recommend, or you can use a paper cutter for cutting out your little book pages and paper towels. You're gonna want some paper towels on hand since we're working with glue, clean up any messes, I also recommend if you have it, wanting to use um, like a paper plate or just a, a regular plate, maybe um, a cutting board even, anything that will help protect your surface, like your table surface, but won't get stuck to the glue. So for instance, the paper towels are really helpful for keeping things clean and wiping off your brush, but I wouldn't recommend letting your little books dry on your paper towel, because then you might get paper towels stuck to it and it won't come off once the book is dried. So I recommend having those implements on hand, um, those supplies, that you would provide from home to make it a little easier. And then the last thing that's part of your kit is going to be these little book pages. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these into strips. These are perfectly sized to the book cover template I have. So these are gonna be the pages we're gonna fold up. And then I've also included some book covers as well. So these book covers, you'll see, have our book covers up straight up and down and then flipped upside down. So that way when we fold up our book, it will be face up either way that the book is turned. 
So this has a variety of great titles on it. I picked some really popular ones that people have been enjoying um, and some favorites here at the library, as well as some fun poetry titles and things like that. Um, and I'll show you as well in this video how to use our template to fill in the blank boxes and maybe completely reconstruct and make your own covers. So that way you can take, say, maybe a title you really like or say, I've read this whole series. I want to put all of those books in there so I can resize it and put those covers in. And then I can change the spine colors and I'll be showing you how to do that as well. But if you're not technologically savvy and you really don't want to try and go into Canva and learn how to do the design pieces, this gives you plenty of really cute little books that you can just cut up these ones I've pre-printed for you and put them on your little book pages and put them in your jar. So I will show you next how we are going to put together our tiny books. All right, so now that we're going to make our tiny books, we're gonna start by taking our sheet of tiny book covers and we're going to cut out our book covers. So this is why I said that it could be really helpful to have a paper cutter. Um, that way you guarantee that you've got nice straight lines. So to start, I'm thinking what I will do is I'm gonna cut this out this way just so that I don't, so I'll cut them like that. So that way I can get nice and close to those book covers and not lose any of them. So I'm gonna take this and just gently cut along that. That, and then I would cut all the way up, but I'm gonna start just by making one or two. Like that. Like that. So that's one of our book covers. I'll take my little paper scraps and put them aside. And then what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I will cut out a couple of these so that we can make a couple of samples of different sizes. So I will start with I'll put that aside like that. And this is why a paper cutter is nice because you can just go straight up and down. Don't have to worry about your straight lines, which can often be tricky for sure. Like that. And my little poetry book of the sun and her flowers. Yes. So I've actually read a couple of these books and I'm curious if any of you have as well. I feel like Lessons in Chemistry was one of the best books of the past couple of years. All right. So now that we've got our tiny book covers, these are all set and ready for us to go. So we're going to put these aside and cut out the little book pages that are going to go with them. So I'm going to put these up here. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my sheet here. And you'll see how this is like a very big sheet. Oh my goodness, it's so big I can't even get it on my camera all in one go. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna just cut these lines all the way up and down, and we're going to make one big long strip. So similarly to what we did before, you'll see I have these nice like grid lines, and what we're gonna wanna use are really just these blocks. So I can cut off this edge, and this extra edge, and this extra edge, because what I wanted to do was make sure that we had, um, like all of these were exactly the same size throughout. And I provided four sheets of these as well um, in your kit, but if you wanna make more, that template that I linked to also has this exact sheet that you can just print more of at home and make more. Luckily, you don't need this to be in color the way you would the book covers. Um, this I just did in a gray scale, so that way you wouldn't see the folds as much when we fold up our pages. But you're just gonna take it, and what I would recommend doing is just cutting off all of that extra bits on the ends, like we'll cut off that little bit. And then I'll cut off this little bit at the bottom here. And again, paper cutter would definitely be your best friend, but I'm not gonna use mine here because I wanna show you how it's done with just the scissors. And then this last bit here we'll cut off as well. If it's not perfectly straight, that's okay. The good part about these being mini books is that nobody's really gonna notice all of those tiny little imperfections because they're just on a cute little scale. So you'll see that mine isn't even perfectly done here. Like the pages aren't quite level, but it still looks really cute. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we will cut strips out of this. So this is our template all ready to go. You'll see everything sort of leveled out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna cut up the line. So I want, I, you don't wanna cut out each individual block 
because that would just be far too much work. What you're gonna wanna do is just cut up the strip. So see, I didn't even do that perfectly, but you can cut the strip up like that. Maybe cut off that little excess bit that I made a mess of there. See, it's perfect for those who aren't always perfect at cutting. Even you can have a beautifully looking little book. So just like that, I'll cut another strip. Because if it isn't perfect, all we wanna do is just trim off those little ugly bits on the ends. And that's really all we need to worry about. So I've got these strips here. This is what our strips of paper are gonna look like. So I'll move my little book covers out of the way for a second. And I did cut some more of these just to have it the ready for a sample. So this is what they're gonna look like when you cut them all up. And what we're gonna do is we're going to fold them up accordion style. So like it's a tiny little accordion. So that way the papers, the pages are all poofed together. So I'm gonna start by taking this. I'm going to line up my little lines like this because each block is going to be the size of one front of your book cover. So you'll see, I'll grab this one, that this lines up perfectly to cover that with a little room for a spine there on the end. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep folding this I folded it this way to start, and so I'm just gonna turn it and fold it back the other way. So if I fold it back that way, then I'm gonna fold this way, and then I'm gonna fold this way. And if you get a little uneven, don't worry about it. Like if they don't line up perfectly, you can just kind of readjust your folding a little bit to sort of keep those lines, because you wanna keep these approximately this size. So we're gonna just keep folding and folding and folding. And then once we've got this all folded, you'll see we've got this nice little accordion style. And this alone can just be one book if you want it to be. So for instance, this book I did really small was just one of these. And you'll see the books I made here are a little smaller because they were for my ornament. So I made them a little tinier than the ones we're gonna make for our book jar. But what you're gonna do is if you wanna make it one, you're already done and we're gonna adhere our book cover. Or if you want, for instance, this was a thick book and I wanted to make it a little bigger. So what I did was I folded up two of these to make this. So what I can do then is take another strip and just do the same thing I did with my little accordion style there. So I can take this like here and then just keep folding. Honestly, the folding of the little pages is kind of the most time consuming part other than designing your books if you choose to go that route. But I think it's fun because it lends a nice, like, I don't know, it's almost meditative to just sit here and fold the pieces of paper up. It feels almost like folding little, little origami papers like that. Perfect. So now I've got two. So then what I'll do is when I'm ready to glue, I will just glue one end to the other end like this. And now I've suddenly got a bigger book and I can adhere the glue and put the cover on like that. And now I will have a book that's twice as thick. If you want, you can also use styrofoam sheets for this. I personally like the look of the paper because it gives you that look of all these little pages in there. So that's my favorite. So next we're gonna get ready to glue. All right, so now that we've got our book pages and we've got our book covers, we are going to make our tiny books. So I've got three stacks here. I'm gonna use them to make one big book and one small book. So as you remember, our small book looks like this. It's got these pages. Whereas our big book looks like this and it's got twice as many pages. So I'm gonna start by making a smaller book with just one. And I'm going to, you can see I'm already getting Mod Podge on myself. You're gonna take your nice little jar of Mod Podge and your little paintbrush and you're gonna dip it in. You don't need a crazy amount. You can't be like, you don't need to be like me and make a mess of your, of your little paintbrush. But you take that. And what you're gonna do to start is we're actually gonna go inside and we're gonna put a little bit on these inside pages to hold them together. And you don't need to do it on all the pages. Like I typically just do it inside of what I can access from the one side of the book like that, because we still wanna be able to squeeze it and have it stick together, but still have that like adherence. So if you wanna fold it up like that, see how that looks, perfect. And if you wanna add a little bit of glue, say I let this and I'm like, okay, I want this to stick together a little bit better. Just take a little bit more Mod Podge and put it in between those pages like that boop, and stick that together like that. So now we've got our little book pages and we want to add our cover. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our book cover 
and we're going to apply Mod Podge thoroughly on both sides. So you want a nice even layer that's enough to stick to, but you don't want globs. So like, don't just like glob it on there and leave it like that. Like spread it out a little bit. You want it to be able to stick, but not get super soggy because you don't want it to like bleed through and get super wet. So what we're gonna do is use that like that. I'll put this down. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little book cover. Don't mind, I'm getting Mod Podge all over myself. And we are going to, and it's okay if you get glue on the cover, because we're going to put glue on the cover. We're going to line it up on the front here. And then we're going to fold it over to the back, like so. Just like that. And you'll see I'm leaving a little bit of room on my spine. What I did was I made it so that you could put two into each of these to sort of make these a little bit bigger. So I would actually recommend using two. Um, or even more if you want, but if you still want to keep it this skinny, it's okay because I've got this nice little, nice little book like this. And then what we're going to do to make sure it holds is we are going to apply a thin layer of Mod Podge on the cover as well and around the sides too. So we're going to add our Mod Podge. Like I said, don't glob it, but even if you do get a little bit of like a thicker layer, it's okay because it will dry clear. So I would recommend just being gentle because you don't want to rip your cover. That should be good because even with those little lines, you'll see that'll dry clear as well. I'm going to put a little bit on my side maybe to hold that together. And then see how I have those covers reversed? So that way when I turn it like this, the spine is still on the left and it is still straight up and down. So I'm going to apply my glue like this, just like that. And I'm getting a little bit on the top, but that's okay. You, can, you can't really go wrong here. Honestly, if you get glue all over the place, it dries clear. And it'll just look really cute when it's in the jar, so you won't even notice. So you'll see mine's a little bit messy. This one's just a little bit chaotic. But that's how that looks. And I'm going to leave it to dry on this plastic lid because nothing will get stuck to it while it dries. So I'm going to let that dry like that in the corner. Don't put it on your paper towel because that will get stuck for real. And what we're going to do is we're going to make our big one now. So we're going to take that piece of paper, that nice folded up accordion style set of pages. We're going to put some glue, some Mod Podge in each of these layers here. Like this. We'll let them stick together. We'll add a little bit more here. Like that. And then we're going to add a little bit more like that. Just like that. So now we've got our pages together. And now what we want to do is add our other set of pages. So I'm going to add some glue to those pages as well first, just to make it a little easier for myself. I'll put in the little glue layer in between, like this. Just like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add glue to one side, like just one back or front of this. And I'm going to use that to adhere it to this stack like this. So then I'll squeeze these together a little bit like that. And now I've got a set that's twice as big. So now I've got my pages all stuck together here. And it's okay if you got glue on the corners because that will dry clear. And then what I'm going to do is the same as for the smaller book. So I'm going to layer up the front. And I'm going to layer up the back, cover these both with some of the Mod Podge, like that. And then you're going to get that nice, fun little glue layer on your fingers. It's so satisfying to get off. Take our little book cover, and we're going to put it on the front like this. Line it up good, like so. And then maybe I'll add a little bit more glue to the back so that it definitely sticks. If you get any lumpy bits, you could just knock those off. And then I'm going to line up the back as well. And this is what I meant about our spine being nice, because you'll see now, since it's a little thicker, this book is a little bit thicker than our other one, we've got this nice little spine here for us that holds those pages in. And you can be more precise about this if you want to make it look a little neater on the spine side. You can like line those up and really fold them neatly. But that's what it's going to look like. And we're going to do the same thing as with our other little book. We're going to cover this with the Mod Podge to make sure it stays and to give it that nice shine. I'm going to put a little bit on the sides too. 
hold those pages together. Gives it a nice little bit of waterproofness too, so that way it's not as easily damaged. Just gonna fold them up like that, just like that. And I've got, now I've got a layer on both sides. It's okay if you got a little bit of streaking because these will dry and it won't leave that mark when it dries. There we go, just like that. So now I'm gonna set this next to this one and you can see they dry really quickly. So this one's already getting there. It is getting quite dry for me. It's not even really tacky to the touch anymore. This Mod Podge works wonders. And that is how we make each of our tiny books. So once you've got these assembled, I recommend letting them dry for at least an hour or two. Just let them sit. Um, honestly, they can be good in as little as like 15 to 20 minutes. But letting them dry before you put them together, if they get stuck together, you just got to gently separate them. And then once they dry, they'll be like these. All right. So I've really only just given these about 10 minutes to dry. And they're already pretty dry. Pretty dry. I can completely touch them. I'm not getting more glue on myself. But that is what my little book looks like. And my other little book. And I think these look really cute. I especially like the way that the double book looks. I think it looks a little bit fuller that way, especially because we have a little bit bigger of covers. So that way you can see the covers. But what you're gonna do is you'll just take your little jar and you will put your books in. And once you make a bunch of them, you will have a jar full of books, just like mine. So I have provided, oh, see, and that's why I say let it dry all the way, because 10 minutes and it's stuck a little bit. I have provided enough covers. In addition to that strip I cut out there, we've also got this whole strip here. So I've provided enough book covers here if you wanna just use some of these, um, or you can watch our tutorial of how to make the books in Canva, and then you will be able to design your own using book covers of books you've read or that you wanna read. All right, so now we are going to be exploring how to use Canva to design your mini book covers if you want to use our book template to make some of your own books, maybe for some books you've read or that you want to read. So we're gonna explore how we're going to use Canva for that. So on your take and make craft kit instructions, so on this sheet that you'll have, you will see that there is a link here. I've also noted for anyone who's not totally comfortable with Canva or who's struggling that the book covers we're using are 1.4 inches tall and four inches wide. So that leaves room for two covers and a spine. So that's how big the whole block that will be the full piece is. So if you want to try and make your own templates or cut out your own pieces of paper and design book covers, that's the size we're using to fit the pages. But if you want, this link is what you're going to end up typing in to access the template I have that we have printed out for you. So if you click on or type in this link, since it's a printed piece of paper, I tried to give you the link to make it easier. So that way, if you need to type it, it's like a shortened URL. So I'm going to put that link in up here, which is just this tiny URL 36HH6SNU. And then when I go, you're going to see a template that I have shared you can start designing now. So you can either edit the template or use the template for a new design. So if I'll click use template for new design, it's going to take me into Canva and give me access to this fun little template here. So you'll see that the first page is a bunch of the book covers. And then the second page are more of those pages. So if say you run out and you're making more books, you can just print this page too to use those book pages that we have made. So that way you can just cut these into strips and they'll give you a bunch of pages and you can use them like that. So I think I only gave you six sheets of this per bag. So if you need more, feel free to print more of this page. But for now, I'm gonna show you how to design your book covers. So I'm only at 31% zoom. So I'm gonna zoom in better here so I can see, there we go. So I'm gonna also hide this so that way I could show you a little better. So what we're going to be working with are individual book covers, which we're gonna get from online. And then this little backdrop, which is our book spine. So if you wanna get rid of the books I have put in here, this is why I turned it into a template for you, is because in this template, you can then take out each of the book covers that you don't want. So you can just delete them. So click on it, backspace, or you can click on it and right click it and then click delete, right click, 
delete. And then what you can do is fill in each of these individual spaces with your own book cover. So for instance, I'll clear out this top row. And what we'll do is we'll put some new book covers in here. So maybe I want to do a book cover for one of the books that I am reading now. So what is one of the books? So I'm reading actually a Sarah J. Moss book called Air of Fire. So Air of Fire, Sarah J. Moss. So you can just Google these. You can use Google and then the Images tab to find any of the book covers you want. Uh, or some tutorials that do this actually recommend going into um, Goodreads because they find that that's the easiest place to copy them from. So say I'm using Goodreads, I can see the cover here and I can right click on it and click copy image. And then I can go back into my Canva, which is up here. Oh, no, nope, I'm on the other one. There we go. And then I'm going to right click and hit paste. I'm going to allow it to paste and then see you've got this nice big book cover. So in Canva, you have the ability to adjust sizes of images. So these corners, see how it turns into little arrows. You can shrink or I can crop this way, but I don't want to crop that way. If you ever need and you mess something up, you can use this little undo button or you can use control Z. But what I'm going to do is just take my corner so it shrinks proportionally and I'm going to shrink it, shrink it. And then what I'm going to end up doing is shrinking it down so that it fits on my little book template. So what I wanted to do is fit the top and bottom here. So I'm going to put it like this. There we go. So top and bottom. And then now the key is you'll see each of our book covers has one up this way and then one upside down. So that way when you fold your little book, either way you look at it, the cover has the spine on the left and the pages on the right. So to do that, I'm going to copy and then I'm going to paste. So that way I have two and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one right here but I'm going to use this little spinning upside down tool and you'll see it gives me a percentage of, of turn so it gives me my angle. What I'm going to do is turn it all the way upside down until it's negative 180 because that means it's completely upside down and there we go. So now I've got this book upside right and upside down so that when I fold it, the spine is always going to be on that left hand side. And the last thing I have to do is I want to change my little spine to match. So what you're going to do to do this is you're going to click in that middle so that you're clicking on the box. So wherever you're clicking, make sure you're on that box. It should highlight the whole thing because it's behind both of your book covers. And then you're going to click on the color. When you click on the color, you'll see all of these colors from your document. So there's a whole lot of colors in here because of these colors that we were using here. You can either scroll down to photo colors and you'll see that any of the pictures you've put in here will have color. So you can click see all. And I've got a bunch of different book covers in here. So it's trying to pull colors from all of these different books. And see here's Air of Fire. What I can do is I can pick any of these if I want because these are all colors from the book. So we've got that, we've got that color, we've got that color, and we've got that color. And you'll see these are all different shades. For this one, I think I like that color because I think that links up with those side bits there. That looks nice. And it's as easy as that. Or if you don't want to go hunting in your photo colors, you just want to change the color to maybe one very specific shade. Maybe I don't like how light this is. You can use add a new color. And then you can use the eyedropper tool to pick a color from your design. So you take this little eyedropper and now you'll see it's looking at all the colors here. So maybe I want to go in and I see all these dark grays. Maybe I want it to be a darker color like that. Voila. So you can use either the color picker tool to select a color manually from the cover or you can scroll down and use those photo colors to select a color. All right. So just to give you a better sense of it, I'll do one more for you. So we're going to go out to Google. And I'm say going to pick, so another book I read that I loved this past year was Osman. Yeah, that's how we spell Osman, is The Last Devil to Die by Richard Osman. I loved these books. Um, the Thursday Murder Club, they are so good. So I might go in here to the Goodreads. I'm not going to log in. I'm just going to right click, copy image. And then, oh, that's my throne of glass. So... There we go. Oh, don't mind me. I'm trying to get my little 
screen sharing tab out of my way. There we go. So now I'm going to go back into this document and I'm going to click anywhere on here and then control V is paste and I'm going to shrink my book cover down. So if I shrink my book cover down like this all the way down and then I put it into these corners. See, I want to line it up like that. Perfect. And then I'm going to change. Oh, first I'm going to make two copies of this so I can copy and then I can paste and then I can use the little twist tool to flip it upside down like that. Just like that. And then I can click on the background now and I can take my little tool to pull that purple out or I can go into my photo colors and find this one just like that. So then I just click on that purple and it'll make that little box purple. Now, if you want, another thing you can do is, so for instance, Fourth Wing is a very long book. So maybe I want my book spine to be bigger because I want to do more pages for that one. You can also just take, click on your little book covers and shift them over a bit. And then you can cut those out and they will be a little thicker. So that way you can introduce more pages. So the thinner you make this spine, the smaller your book will be and the thicker, the bigger. So I like it. This is like a nice average size, I feel like but you can make it smaller or bigger depending on the book you're using. So this is what you will do to make your little book covers. And when you're done, you're gonna click this share button. And this is where I have say the links if you wanna share it with somebody, but you're going to go down to download. And when you click on download, it'll let you download it as a PNG or you can change it to a PDF or an SVG, depending on if you have the free version or the paid version. So in the free version, you can do PNG and PDF. So I'm going to do PNG because that's a picture. And if you want to increase the quality, you can make the size big. And it says it might make your design take longer than usual to download. That's OK. This is just if you want that really crisp quality that helps heighten your design. Um, we're not really worried about a transparent background here. And then if you want, if you're only printing your book covers, you can select this part and only print page one, or say you didn't need any book, more book covers, you just needed more of those pages, you could do page two. The thing to remember here is that if you download these pages together, it will download as a zip file. So what you will have to do is unzip your file, which is super easy and I can show you that. Let me see, I think I might need to change my share to be able to share show you that because I'm on my web screen, but let's see. But you'll see it's taking a little bit longer to download here just because I increased that quality to make sure it's nice and easy, easy to see. So yes, so that, and then let's see what I can do here. Okay, so what I've done is I went to my downloads now to show you where we had that downloaded. So when I downloaded this PNG, it's up in here and you'll see it has this little zipper on it. So I clicked on that and it took me into the little folder. But these, because it's a zip file, are not gonna be as easy to print and use. So if you click back out to downloads, all you have to do to unzip a file is right click on your little folder and click extract all. And then you can just let it go right to downloads where you are now. And then you'll see, boop, so it opened up this one, but also if I just exit out, see there's this unzipped version. So this doesn't, this has the zipper, that's the zipped up file. This is the unzipped one. So then all I have to do is click on this. I'll open it with photos and it shows me my book covers. So I can just print this um, on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and that will give me my book covers. So that is how we use Canva to design. If you have the free version of Canva, which is super easy to make an account, um, just go to canva.com and you can sign up for one. If you're having any issues, feel free to reach out to me at bcimino at albright.org. That's B-C-I-M-I-N-O at albright.org. Let me know if you have any questions, if I can help you at all. Um, and I think this is just perfect to be able to make all of your own books and make your jar customized to you, not just using the ones that I made as samples for you. So please do share with us if you make any of these. We would love to see your finished jars or your finished books and find out what you're reading and what designs you chose to make. If you get fun with it, you can put something like you can use little graphics on your little spines or just design your own book covers and make your own fake books rather than using real books. But please, 
reach out to us, share them with us on social media, feel free to tag us at Scranton Public Library, or shoot me an email at that same email with your pictures, and I'd be happy to share them from the library's page. We love to see what you guys are creating um, in our various crafting programs, including these take and makes. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a good one.